Are data analysts about to lose their jobs to AI? Let's find out. Hey everyone, Alice Zhao here from Maven Analytics and welcome to AI vs. Analyst, where data pros go head to head against the latest generative AI tools to solve real world problems. For this challenge, we have Chris Dutton, BI expert and founder of Maven Analytics, going up against OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0. For today's task, we'll be digging into a data set containing 120 years of Olympic history. The goal? Use data visualization to explore how the number of athletes from each country has trended over time. I'll go first and attempt to solve the task using only ChatGPT, and then Chris will walk us through how he would tackle the problem as a BI expert. Let's get started. All right, I've downloaded the Olympic data from the data playground, and now I've opened up ChatGPT, and specifically, I'm using ChatGPT 4.0. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just go down here and click upload from computer, and I'm gonna upload the Olympic athlete zip file. So once that loads, I'm gonna send it over to ChatGPT and see what it gives me. Okay, so now it looks like it's extracted these four CSV files from the zip file, which is great. And now I want to learn more, so I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to describe the data. So it's telling me that within the athlete event CSV file, there are all these columns here. So we see the athlete's name, the team they're on, as well as the year they're in the Olympics and so on. And then down here, we also have this data dictionary for athlete events with the same columns. We have this country definitions file with details about the country names and codes, as well as a country definitions data dictionary. So this is a pretty good overview of the columns of the data. Let's get a better understanding of the rows of the data. Data. So I'm going to ask it to summarize some data for me. I want to know how many athletes are from each country each year. And it really quickly returns this table here, which is really useful. It's saying that in the year 1896, there were five athletes from Australia. And if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, then I see in 2016, there were 31 athletes from Zimbabwe. So now this data is in a great format for a visualization. So now I'm gonna paste in our prompt and I'm really curious what visualization ChatGPT is gonna give me. All right, so the first thing that it's giving me is this line chart that has a ton of lines in it and it's kind of hard to read, but let's just try to figure out what's going on here. We see that this is telling us that over time, this is the number of athletes that are coming from all these countries here and it's telling us that it's showing us this visual for selected countries. Okay, so it looks like USA, China, and Russia are on here, and there are 10 countries total. And I would say that this is too much for one chart. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to simplify this viz. Okay, so it looks like the way that it simplified the visualization was reducing it from 10 countries to five countries. And I would agree that this visualization is much clearer. Now this only has information for five countries, but I want the information for all the countries. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to tweak this visual. I'm gonna say, can you roll up the data by continent? So instead of looking at each country, I want to look at each continent. So I want multiple countries to roll up into each continent and then for ChatGPT to visualize it all on a line chart. Okay, it did that pretty quickly. Now I see that there are six continents here. Antarctica is not included because I'm guessing there aren't any Olympic athletes from Antarctica, but we see the other six here and there are some interesting trends in this data. I see that Europe seems to always be on top here. And then there's also this interesting cyclical pattern towards the end. And I'm able to see that pretty clearly using this data visualization. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is just ask ChatGPT to go one step further. And I'm gonna say, can you share any insights from this viz? Okay, it's telling me that there's consistent growth in North America and Europe, rising representation in Asia, and all these other insights here. And these all seem pretty useful to me. So I would say that overall, it was able to quickly create this visualization and roll up the data by continent, and also share a few useful insights all within just a couple of minutes. All right, pretty solid performance from ChatGPT. Next, I'll pass it over to Chris to walk us through his approach to solving this task. So I've downloaded the data set, and first thing I'm gonna do is just load up those CSV files into an Excel workbook just to get a lay of the land and see what kind of data that we're dealing with here. So we had four CSV files, athlete events, country definitions, 
and two data dictionaries. And it looks like the athlete events table, that's gonna be my primary data set. We've got athlete IDs and names, gender, age, height, and weight. Looks like we have a team column here in G, which might be able to give us some insight. But as we scroll through, it actually looks like kind of nonsense. It's super messy. Don't think I'm gonna be able to use this field for any sort of geospatial analysis at all. That said, I do have this NOC or National Olympic Committee field. Uh, this is much cleaner. This is more standardized into a three letter code. And using that code can actually tie it into our country definition table here to access a much more intuitive region or country name here in column B. Now, we also have some additional fields. We've got the games with year and season broken out, the host city, the sport, specific events, and if that athlete earned a gold, silver, or bronze medal. And just doing a little bit of quick and dirty data profiling here. Looks like we've got 271,000 records or rows represented. And if I jump down to the bottom, this is sorted ascending. Got about 135,000 distinct IDs or athletes represented in this sample. In terms of the time period, you'd see we've got data going back to the 1896 games all the way through 2016. Pretty straightforward data set, pretty intuitive so far. Now the next decision I need to really make is which tool do I want to use to produce this visual. And if I think back to the actual brief itself, I want to create a data visualization to explore how the number of Olympic athletes from each country has trended over time. When I hear that brief, I think about leaning towards things like area charts or maybe even something like a ribbon chart. And when I see words like explore, that makes me want to include some sort of an interactive element as well. And for those reasons, I'm gonna to lean towards a tool like Power BI because it has such a robust set of data visualization and reporting tools. So let's go ahead and fire up Power BI and see if we can give this thing a shot. All right, so here we are in Power BI. First thing I'm gonna do is grab our data from a CSV, and we'll go ahead and start with our athlete event data set here. This is gonna create that connection. I'll see my quick preview here based on the first 200 rows, and I do wanna do a bit of transformation, so I'm gonna click Transform Data, here we've got that same familiar data that we just looked at in Excel. And there's one thing that I'm beginning to notice here that's a little bit nuanced, but really, really important, especially if we want to produce accurate calculations, which is the granularity of this table. Now, what we're essentially trying to come up with is the number of athletes, in other words, the distinct count of athlete IDs by team or country and by year. But the problem is that an athlete can show up multiple times if they've participated in multiple events. So look at athlete number five, for instance, Christine. She's from the Netherlands and she participated in the 1988 and 1992 Winter Games. She appears twice for each of those Olympics and that's because she participated in two different speed skating events at both of those games. So in its current format, the way the data is currently structured, it would be very, very hard to calculate the proper distinct count of IDs. Now there are a few ways that we could tackle something like this. In this case, because I actually don't need many of these fields, what I'm gonna do is use the group by tools to roll up or aggregate this data to a higher level table that we can use to make our calculations simpler and more accurate. So let's go ahead to the home menu. I'm gonna use the group by option to produce that new aggregated table. And the fields that I wanna include, let's bring in the athlete ID. Might as well bring in the name as well. We want the NOC or Olympic Committee field. We'll need the year. And let's also bring in the season as well. And we can use kind of that default count rows aggregation and press OK. And check this out. Now we have a brand new table with just those five fields that we care about. And we actually don't even need this count column anymore. So we can go ahead and remove that. And let's just do a little bit of cleanup. Let's call this athlete ID, just to be clear. And let's name this table athletes. So that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and close and apply this table. Power BI is going to create that connection, load the data into the model, and there we go. We've got about 187,000 rows or records loaded. And if we jump over to our table view, we'll see that data captured here. So next up, let's grab those country definitions, which also live in a CSV file. I grab country definitions, press open. And just like before, we get our preview pane. We're going to transform that data in the query editor. 
And this table is much simpler, but just a couple tweaks that we need to make here. We actually don't need this notes column, so let's remove it. And notice that we need to promote this first row, which represents the column headers. We can use first row as headers like so. And let's just name this one, let's call it regions here, and go ahead and apply those changes. There we go, 230 rows loaded. Now we see athletes and regions. And to join those tables together, let's head to our model view and we can relate these tables based on that NOC field. So this is a many to one relationship, looks good. And there we go, we've created our relationship between these two tables. And that should give us the source data that we need to produce this visual. So let's jump to our report view here. And like we talked about, I think I'd like to go with something like a ribbon chart in this case. And that's gonna show us that change in composition or ranking by country over time, which I think will do a really nice job addressing the brief. Let's resize it a little bit and add some data to this visual. Our x-axis is going to be the year from our athlete table. The y-axis, that's going to be that distinct count of athlete IDs. So we'll summarize as a distinct count. And the legend is how we want to segment or break down these values. In this case, we're going to pull that nice clean region name, which remember is related to athletes. And there we go. So we've got all the data into this visual. We're technically showing the right information, but obviously it's a total mess here. Two things that immediately jump out at me. Number one, we're just showing way, way too much detail. Really can't discern any kind of meaningful pattern or insight here. So we could potentially try to roll this up at a higher level, like by continent, for instance, but that would be really manual and tedious, especially because countries can be captured in so many different ways. Another option, which I actually prefer in this case, is to filter this visual down to just show you know, the top five or top 10 countries and eliminate some of that extra noise. So let's go ahead and add a visual level filter here on region. I'm going to add a top end filter. And why don't we keep it super simple and just show the top five countries by the distinct count of athlete ID, like so. And when we apply that filter, we see the view simplify quite a bit. Now, the other thing that I notice here right away is this crazy bouncy volatility towards the end of our chart here, starting in about 94. And the reason we see that is because in that year, 1994, the Olympics switched to an alternating summer winter event schedule every two years, which wasn't the case before that. So because we have so many fewer athletes participating in winter events, it really makes any sort of trend or insight impossible to discern after that date. So for that reason, what I think would make much more sense is to visualize those trends separately. So we could create two different versions of this chart, but going back to that concept of interactivity, what I'm actually gonna do here is add a slicer, basically just a visual filter, and we're gonna be able to slice on that season field from our athlete table, and I'm just gonna do a little format here. I'm gonna change it from a vertical list to a tile option, and rearrange things just a bit. And now check this out. I'm not worried too much about format or polish at this point, just trying to get good proof of concept. But now we can drill into the trend for summer and the trend for winter games. And now these two stories become much more clear. We start to see some really interesting things happening right off the bat. So it looks like the U.S. has been kind of the top country for the past several Olympics in terms of sending athletes to the summer games. Before that, it looks like Germany had the most athletes in 1988. Then we see this kind of strange gap in 1980 where the U.S. doesn't appear at all. That's actually because the U.S. boycotted the 1980 Olympic Games. Similar thing looking at the Winter Games. Really interesting here, we saw that Germany was kind of sending the most athletes during the span from the 1960s through 80s. And then the U.S. stepped in and has been the top country since that point. And then looking at this pink series here, Canada specifically, kind of interesting to see how they've grown or increased in rank to the point where they've been the number two country for the last three games. Now, obviously, a lot more that we could do here to drill in deeper, but that's a pretty good representation of how I would approach tackling a brief like this. So, Chris, after seeing both solutions, what are some of your initial thoughts? All right, so if I'm being honest, not super impressed with the ChatGPT solution, and I say that for two reasons. 
First, it just didn't calculate those athlete counts correctly, which is a huge miss. And what concerns me is that it produced those outputs instantly and with total confidence and conviction, which makes it really easy to blindly trust that those numbers are accurate. Now, it wasn't a huge deal in this particular use case, but you can imagine what types of problems that might cause had we been dealing with actual critical business data where precision matters and where the stakes are much, much higher. Second, it missed a lot of nuance and context in the data set. Yeah, technically it answered the prompt, it gave you a line chart, but it didn't go deeper and it didn't address some of the obvious questions that a human would likely ask. For example, it didn't recognize that breaking out summer and winter games would tell a much more clear and meaningful story. And while it did produce some observations based on basic patterns and trends, there's so much context that it didn't pick up on. The impact of World War II in the 1940s, the US boycott in 1980, the rise of Canada and Russia as Winter Olympic powerhouses. These are the types of insights and takeaways that an audience would most likely care about. So overall, I definitely have some reservations about using ChatGPT alone to solve a task like this. Those are both great points. That said, is there anything that ChatGPT did that you were really impressed by or that you think might be useful for analysts? Yeah, absolutely. Just the fact that it was able to ingest and summarize those tables so quickly was pretty impressive. And I do think it can be a huge time saver, especially for cut and dry tasks like data prep or profiling. So I'd recommend some human QA as well, but definitely useful at least as a first pass. And to be clear, I do think that Gen AI tools like ChatGPT can and should play an important role for data analysis. But the key to remember is that these are tools designed to supplement our skills, not replace them. That's really well said. Thanks again, Chris, for joining us and walking us through your solution. And most of all, for being brave enough to go head to head against AI. All right, let's recap our key takeaways from this challenge and talk about where AI shined and where it fell short. ChatGPT did a great job ingesting and profiling the data very quickly, even with multiple tables. ChatGPT was able to map NOC codes to continents much faster than a human would be able to. This would have been really tedious to QA given all the variations in the country names of the data. ChatGPT miscalculated the athlete counts and failed to realize that the data needed to be aggregated first. This is something that Chris spotted pretty early on as an expert analyst. ChatGPT missed some of the nuances in this data set, like the US boycott in 1980 or the switch to alternating summer and winter games in 94. I think ChatGPT could have been able to do some of this with some additional prompting, but again, you really needed that analyst perspective here. ChatGPT needed quite a bit of prompting to produce effective visuals, and it really felt limited in terms of customization and interactivity, especially compared to what Chris was able to build in Power BI with his ribbon chart. So for all these reasons, I'm going to give this one to Chris, but I definitely see some opportunities where ChatGPT could add value when solving tasks like this. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. We'll see you in the next one.